Uh, I think one, uh, maybe I use the word Martian to describe myself, but I think uh, maybe I can expand on that and say that I am somebody who is puzzled. I don't really know what this thing is, health systems and health policy and uh, that's, uh, sometimes it may not sound like that, it may sound like I you know, am saying things which are written in stone, but that's not the case. Please challenge me at any point. Uh, but uh, what I thought it would be useful for us was today to really spend the day thinking about um, exactly this kind of you know puzzlement. How do we uh, we started with the Martian exercise? How do we break that understanding that this is a sort of a black box? There are certain things we can't know, certain things we can know. Is there some way that we can actually know things systematically about the health system? Uh, and um, can we? Uh, is it something that is waiting to be discovered, or is it something that we already know? And what is already known? What is waiting to be discovered? I think that's the kind of tension. Uh, all of us, if we subscribe in some way to the field of research, we have to be comfortable with the idea of not knowing. Because then otherwise, if we already know, then there is no point of doing the research. Uh, so uh, I, I, I very much feel that way. I think uh, many of us who have been involved in this exercise feel that way. Uh, and I hope uh, you do as well. Uh, so just to bring you up to speed, I am going to start by just orienting you a little bit to what uh, how this idea of Keystone started. Uh, and then after that, we'll have two fairly intensive uh, uh, sessions. Uh, those will be more on thinking about what are the kind of frameworks we can use, what are the kind of ways in which we can, uh, you know, think about health systems in a constructive way that helps us to research them. And uh, we may ask you to make uh, sort of a short presentations after that, and we'd go into plenary after the group work. And then we'll wrap up at the end uh, with some thoughts on what we call the Keystone Vertical which is your individual uh, sort of trajectories towards developing a research plan by the end of these 14 days. Uh, we feel that this is quite an important component and it will help you to think about how you might individually want to do a piece of work in this field. It doesn't mean you have to take it to completion, it may be something that uh, you keep with you, you do at some point later in your life when there is an opportunity or it may open up different avenues for you. But ideally it would be something if you want to apply it, implement it in your daily life, you can take that research plan and we will help you uh, sit with you and help you through these 14 days to develop that plan. So they will end with that uh, and there will be some readings for the next day as well. So just getting oriented to Keystone, uh, first a quick over, this is just an overview of what I am going to talk about in the next uh, hour. Uh, so why Keystone and also the aims and objectives, uh, the course outline and uh, I have just missed out there that I am also just going to be talking a little bit about something called threshold concepts and threshold skills. These were there in your course outline if you had the chance to read them. Uh, and also a little bit about uh, what is the scope of health policy and systems research. So today actually we are not really going to be talking about the research domain, we are just going to be talking about systems. So what are systems, trying to understand systems, trying to understand policy, what is policy. Uh, but uh, still I thought it would be useful to just give you a quick starter about you know what, what we think of as the scope of this field of health policy and systems research. So quickly, why Keystone? Obviously, we all agree that health systems matter. I think if we didn't agree on that, we wouldn't be here. So this is, uh, we are also, I just want to make a tribute here to uh, the CHEPSA initiative, which is uh, a consortium for health uh, economics and policy and systems analysis in Africa. So this is a consortium uh, based in Cape Town, University of Cape Town, University of Western Cape. Some of the leading lights in this field of health policy and systems research uh, have created this consortium and we actually borrow a lot from them. Uh, so some lectures that uh, even I will be delivering will be actually uh, taken a lot from their materials, they are available open access. Uh, but uh, we, uh, and in the same spirit, uh, we will also be making Keystone open access and available for all. So wherever there is a little note here that says Gertz Chepsa, it means that I have uh, drawn some ideas from their slides. Uh, so because health systems matter, so this is a very uh, you know uh, overarching kind of slide. Health systems do matter, not just to individuals. Obviously, they do matter to each one of us. Individuals, of course, as part of populations. Uh, care and support when sick and vulnerable. So that is another important thing. It is not just about when people are sick, but even when they may be uh, at risk of becoming sick. Uh, so they have protection against that. They have support when they are not yet sick, but they may be uh, in a position where they could get sick. So that could be financial support, that could be social support, other forms of support. 
and of course treatment and cure for sickness that is most the common association of people of health systems is something that goes uh, that exists to uh, support the delivery of health services uh, and beyond that uh, health systems also matter because health systems don't just exist for a outcome you know for a particular outcome they they exist sometimes they just exist and sometimes they don't even play a very productive role in so in society sometimes they can even play a negative role in society but they do exist they are part of society they employ people uh, they you know a lo large numbers of a large amounts of money that funneled through them so because of all those factors also we need to be attentive to them it's not just because of the function that they serve but because of the role that they play in society and the fact that they are uh, institutions uh, which are embedded in society uh, and the fact that uh, many of the people who staff them are subject to those same norms rules uh, ways of behaving that you know this of the society that they live in so they are definitely conditioned by the institutional rules so if you belong to a system certainly you you will follow or some people don't follow but you may be conditioned by the rules that the institution the health system sets up for you but at the same time you are also con conditioned by the rules and norms that the wider society sets up for you so uh, systems are definitely part of social institutions maybe one thing uh, uh, you know we may find is that sometimes when systems don't fail uh, when they when they don't work it's because they fail to be uh, social they fail to actually understand society and they fail to respond to society's needs their failure is not at the level that you know they are not actually providing care when people come to them but the failure is that they are failing to establish themselves in society they are failing to win the trust of people people don't know that you know this is something that you know we can actually make use of in this in the correct way and i think that actually describes uh, many health systems quite accurately so that's why again it's important to think about uh, why health systems matter not just to individuals but also to societies so then again just moving quickly from the idea of because health systems matter to this idea that you know because all of us are interested in research at the heart of it we are all inquirers we are all explorers somebody said explorer somebody said um, they are curious somebody said they are passionate so this is i think we are all passionate about research uh, we use the extended term health policy and systems research for a field that is often referred to simply as health systems research but uh, this is from a paper that i co-authored with uh, some other uh, uh, people who work in hpsr a few years ago for us the broader term in which we include policy uh, captures the terrain of work uh, it encompasses because it explicitly identifies the interconnections between policy and systems and highlights the social and political nature of the field so i think all of you have highlighted that in your uh, martian uh, exercise that uh, you know politics decision making governance these things are not independent of the system they are part of the system and maybe also it doesn't only happen at the top you know somebody had a pyramid diagram but actually the decisions are being made at every step the front line provider sometimes makes the most important decisions sometimes the most important decision is made by the uh, user whether to show up or not you know so uh, everybody is a decision maker so if we try and look at it a little bit differently and think about it uh, as a system being a composite of uh, decisions of various people maybe we could look at it like that then you know you might actually look at it in a completely different way uh, so this is just to explain why we call it health policy and systems research but this important point it is researchable and the re field that helps you to research it is health policy and systems research uh, recently i was in a meeting with a government uh, official who will remain unnamed high level government health health ministry official Uh, who said that uh, you know this uh, we don't really need to research this this is not rocket science we just need better management so uh, that's a view that a lot of people have and that's what i call black box thinking so there is a box and all the inputs go into that and there is it's well managed and somehow the outputs that you want come out yeah so um, i don't really agree with that i think for reasons which will become very clear but if anybody feels that's the case please please uh, uh, say speak up because you're absolutely free to disagree with me uh, but uh, uh, yeah anybody has thinks that you can actually uh, manage a system well and that will create the right uh, outputs that you want to achieve i'm sure it's been done in places i'm not saying that i completely agree with it but i'm just saying that maybe what we are saying is that there are dis different aspects of management which we were not able to cover in in the initial aspect where we say we pick up an example and put it in another place the as is which is what we are doing when we are doing a positivist approach that we really look at it and put it there and say that this is how it will work maybe we just maybe we need to expand it a bit uh, to look at what are the other contextual factors that really come in 
but not go completely out and just, I mean, in the sense that whatever we do should somewhere feed back into uh, policy or actual decision making, I feel. So I think this is a really important discussion to have because it's an existential issue for us as researchers. Yes, please, Dikho. So if we take second social neurosis, when we say the research is, we have enough research is done and only we need to manage. So two neurosis is one disease which is most common and quote unquote most simplistic. But if we see the fact that the major say, breakthrough in the tuberculosis had been done only once. That was in 1944 when this streptomycin came and after that only the improvisation have come. Till 2014, when the US started against the resurgence of tuberculosis and they had to come up with a new research. So, and what was happening that even in dogs, we were trying to give the medicine and all kind of the logic that we gave. Right. But hardcore research yep. it was not being done because it was affecting the people who could not afford the research. So, by hardcore research, you mean drug development? Yeah, drug development. Okay. What Dr. Sanjay said, I will elaborate in health system context. Suppose I am sitting with the state program officer, maternal and child health in Bihar. And he says that my referral transport mechanism is not working. Yeah. The uh, compliance rate is only 6%. Yeah. So, at that particular time, he wants answer from us. And uh, if we will suggest that we should do a research to uh, know the causes why your yeah. referral transport mechanism is not working, he wants it. He will say that what you have been told, that uh, we need an answer. Yeah. And uh, it's a managerial issue, you tell. Yeah. If you are a technical person, you should choose what, what we should do. Right. So, how we can align our health system yeah. research with this operational aspect? Sure. The, that means when we are researching health system, we should uh, at the same time focus on the thing that it will, as a byproduct, it will improve the system. Sure. Thank you. Great. So, yeah. I agree with what he has said. Uh, maybe uh, this is because uh, most of the research that is being done is not in a form that policy makers understand, mm -hmm. but they need uh, actionable points yep. that they can take action on. Right. But what the outputs are being generated, most of the result, uh, the research that is being carried out is in a form that, uh, that the other researchers understand and appreciate. Right. So, so, there is a marked difference. So, I think that's, uh, I mean, you're making a very good point, and I think many people have made it that research is often not done in a way that policymakers find useful. Now, can I just make a slightly different point to that? Uh, should we always produce research that policymakers find useful? Do they all, are they always asking the right questions? But then they are the implementers. And they need right. those questions. Sure. So, can I sure. another example? Yep. I think uh, we have the highest number of publications, nth number of publications related to general Suraksha Yojana, JSY. Right. If you will search for JSY, yeah. many How many would you find? Can I just ask you? Um, I think oh, in the tens or in the hundreds? It's almost in hundreds. In the hundreds? Really? Yeah. JSY? There are, there are many international authors who have wrote them. Uh, okay. JSY, All right. Rather than being implemented like okay. But I'm, I'm sure it's still very small volume compared to, say, Bismarckian reforms or compared to the U.S. Uh, Obamacare or something like that. There must be thousands of articles on those uh, reforms. No, I'm just saying because it's just a question of volume as well. I mean, when we say that we've got too much research, I think we should look at some countries which are producing so much research for much smaller populations, for much smaller systems. And they still say they don't have enough research. So I think we should be a little bit careful about saying we've got too much research. I think we definitely don't have enough research. No, That's I definitely been... That, I was not saying that. Sure, yeah, but please, please, you make a different point. Please, yeah, I wanted to say that despite those number of research, we could not influence the JSY disease. Yeah. We could not even the, you know, right. dent a okay. point in JSY mandate, what, right. what, how the JSY is being Sure. So, I, I just pointing out that I'm seeing a diametrically, not diametrically, but a slightly different perspective here. Uh, there's a view that policymakers' needs need to be served, and I think we all agree with that. I think this is not something we want to deny. But then there's a view over there which says that, look, the policymakers may be asking the wrong questions, you know. What is the point of saying how do you deliver dots better when there's been no drug development for 60 years? Are we asking the wrong question? Why should people be subjected to six months of treatment for a, for a disease? Uh, that, you know, potentially if drugs had been developed could be cured in a week. Uh, you know, that's a question to ask. Please so, I yeah. the one, the most recent uh, by the field work uh, we did yep. with this uh, uh, UNICEF and uh, the government of India project was this on NRC, this Nutritional Rehabilitation Center. And an interesting that four states that we were trying to cover us, yeah. the Bihar, Madhya Pradesh, uh, Jharkhand and uh, Chhattisgarh. 
And the question which uh, they were asking was that we are running the NRC, the NRC are trying to do that the nutrition is and all kind of data are not going to respond to the data question, but that has a different effect. The question was very simple, that why we have a man and his child? And the, the response that UNICEF wanted, UNICEF wanted us to see is that please find a qualitative answer to the question because data is not helping us. Okay. We have pumped up all our money, all our resources. We have roped in NGOs. We are trying to manage it. But still we find a man and his child all across the world. Okay. Why it is so? So I think, I think that's a very good point you're making. And I think there will be opportunities for us to exa uh, examine examples of what we're talking about. I think the key takeaway from some of this is that there is a role for researchers in serving policymakers' needs. There is also possibly a role for researchers in questioning policymakers' needs and in widening the scope of the debate. Yeah, and challenging why we are asking some questions, why we are not asking other questions. So there is a wide range of ways in which we can act. So we shouldn't just think ourselves as uh, uh, you know people uh, as fu functional. You know, we are not only serving a function; we are, su we are also serving a role in society. Uh, so maybe we'll develop that a little bit more uh, as we move ahead. Okay. So just to come again, draw us back to this field, HPSR. So this is uh, again just uh, to highlight that this is uh, a mixed kind of lineage. This discipline has had a mixed kind of lineage. It's really come about quite recently in the last 20 years as a series of approaches. It's a f uh, I'd rather call than calling it a field, I would even call it a family of approaches. It's like different types of ways in which we can answer particular questions. Uh, and the impetus, the motivation for all, a lot of this has come from public health specialists trying to resolve practical concerns. You know, People who are in the field, they are concerned why when the system becomes the problem. Those are the people who are right in the middle of it and they're trying to resolve those concerns. But then a lot of people who actually brought the tools with which you can research these things effectively and meaningfully are actually come from uh, you know the more uh, social kind of disciplines, uh, social sciences, uh, health economics, sociology, political science. I've only named a few. Actually, m management sciences and uh, uh, legal studies and ethical studies and uh, a lot of these should also be featured there. So this is a bit of an incomplete list. I apologize for that. And then these are just some names. Actually, this is again from, uh, taken from a um, uh, uh, paper that uh, I authored with uh, some non-Indian authors, so not a lot of non-Indian names there. But you'll recognize a few names there we put in who are not traditionally recognized uh, as people who have been involved in health systems research. But actually, when you read their work, they've been working in the field of, say, T.N. Madan has done a lot of, uh, he's an eminent sociologist, he has done a lot of work on Social, uh, sociological questions which are unrelated to health systems but then he has written one really important book on doctors and society which is really worth reading and if you read that book then uh, you will think this is a beautiful health systems research uh, study and it probably influenced a whole generation of people to start thinking about institu institutions and systems in a different way uh, and about professions in a different way. Uh, Elliot Friedson also wrote about profession of medicine uh, these other people have actually been involved in developing field of health economics, Abel Smith and Ann Mills and uh, some good sociologists there who worked in India, Roger Jeffrey, Charles Leslie, Mark Mister. And then these are the kind of people who actually fall more within this category. I mean, I'm not saying that these are, uh, it's important to know the names or anything like that. And I'm sure there are many names from other settings who are, uh, including from India, who are equally important. But I'm just giving it as an example. So that's actually uh, at the heart of some of the issues we face actually with, within HPSR because the people who are motivated sometimes don't have the tools and the people who have the tools sometimes are not motivated. You know, like I don't see anybody actually in Keystone, we really wanted to get more attention from people working in social science departments in universities. Uh, we have TIS representation definitely, but TIS probably from the health sciences, but you know, we like also the sociologists and anthropologists and economists who don't traditionally work in health to get involved in HPSR and that's we're finding it missing and that's probably because they don't have the same motivation that a lot of us have we work in public health most of us um, so there is that kind of slight gap over there and uh, this is uh, I just like to highlight a couple of caveats here also and uh, there is uh, maybe the thing I just alluded to is actually behind some of these problems and caveats in HPSR Unfortunately, while HPSR is becoming very popular, now there is a lot of movement around it, even some funding you, there is uh, that exists, although it's still very limited compared to funding that there is for disease control. Uh, 
HPSR is uh, unfortunately, uh, in spite of the kind of growing attention on HPSR, it is still being interpreted a bit narrowly, more in terms of its utility for addressing the constraints of specific interventions, focusing on hardware more than software and focusing on operational more than fundamental society. So, some of the issues we just discussed actually, uh, a lot of uh, HPSR is being seen as uh, you know something that is useful for us to achieve our ends. Which is which it is, no question about it, but it is also uh, important for a range of other reasons. Uh, and the other uh, issue that uh, uh, I'd like just like to highlight here is what we have called disciplinary capture in this paper in PLOS, PLOS Medicine series, which was in your pre-course readings as well. Uh, quantitative and deductive methods and corresponding criteria of quality are often applied where sometimes different types of methods could be more appropriate. And this is something we are going to talk about throughout these 14 days. Uh, that. HPSR is a family of approaches, it encompasses quantitative and positive science, very important place for them, but also an equally important place for different types of ways, different types of ways of doing research, different types of methodologies and there is no gold standard in HPSR. It actually the question drives the method you choose. So there is a gold standard for a particular question. So for a particular question that you develop, there may be a best approach. But overall, overall, we don't subscribe to the traditional public health classification of a hierarchy of approaches, which has RCTs at the top and uh, you know case studies at the bottom. In some cases, in HPSR, case studies are the most useful tool you can have if done well. Uh, so it's called a flat hierarchy. O overarchingly, in the field, there is no gold standard. There is a equal respect, equal attention to different types of methods, and they are applied as and when they are useful and relevant. So that's also, we'll come to that when you talk about the threshold concepts as well, that's a key uh, aspect. Uh, so apart from, so we've been through, so because health systems matter, because health systems are researchable and finally, and because we clearly need to strengthen the field further and to build capacity. So, um, so okay, so while the JSY may have attracted hundreds of publications, I think uh, if we do a PubMed search for health systems research or health policy and systems research, we probably only have a few, you know, I, I would not count them in more than the hundreds actually. Uh, I don't know, maybe we, if we take a wider interpretation then we may get more, but it's pathetically low for a country like ours. Each state should have, a, you know, thousands of publications or each district potentially should have hundreds of publications. So, uh, uh, I think it's really, really low and uh, it's not that we, uh, India doesn't have capacities, we have so many universities, so many uh, educated, highly skilled people, but sometimes their uh, efforts are not channelized in the right directions. Uh, like they, they don't have an understanding of how, what policymakers needs are, where the research could be used in a more useful way. They also maybe don't have the, uh, again it's a systems issue, maybe they don't have, the, the system doesn't support them to work in a way that their research can become more useful and more productive and more. Uh, uh, and, and get taken up by people who make decisions. Uh, 